Hello and welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. My name's Chris Cubbage. I'm the executive editor with My Security Media. We're the official media partners to the Australian Cyber Week 2022 with Aus Cyber and the Stone and Chalk Group. There are events across the country, Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide and in Perth. Uh, we've done a series of interviews with the special guests and special partners throughout the week. Each has a unique call to action. So without further ado, here's our special guest. Kate Pounder, uh, CEO with the Technology Council of Australia. Thanks very much for joining us on our Tech and Sec Weekly. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, Kate, I haven't we haven't met before, so I'm very much interested to know what the Technology Council uh, is doing. And this is obviously part of the Australian Cyber Week 2022, which is kicking off now as, as this goes uh, live. Um, but yeah, just a little bit more about uh, the Tech Technology Council of Australia and what your key functions are? The Tech Council of Australia is the peak body representing Australia's tech sector in Australia. So that includes software companies, it includes venture capital firms, it includes people in deep tech such as quantum and, and drones, as well as cybersecurity firms. And our role is threefold. We undertake policy and advocacy work um, to help strengthen Australia's tech sector and to grow more tech jobs here and to fill them critically. We also uh, do research because we know that um, there's not always good data on what's happening in the jobs market or where Australia has strengths in the tech sector. So we do work on that to help inform that policy making. And then the third thing we do is engagement. So we try to bring together the industry with decision makers to help understand each other and uh, make sure that we're getting the best outcomes for the country. So it's industry focused, would you say? So the industry members uh, and they're sort of an advocacy group uh, for the broader technology sector in Australia? Yeah, absolutely. So we, as I said, we represent those companies in the direct sector and we basically help translate their ideas for making the sector stronger to governments and then work with governments to understand their policy priorities or concerns to work out you know, how we can be a responsible sector and um, have a healthy and thriving economy and, and create more jobs together, but you know, while also being responsible about risks, including cybersecurity. Well, cybersecurity is like a hot topic right now, as it always should be, and we've obviously covered it for a while. What's the direct link and uh, involvement next week for the Australian Cyber Week? We're so thrilled to be uh, working with our cyber around um, uh, National Cyber Week. And it couldn't be more timely, let me say that, just on the eve of some really shocking cyber incidents in Australia. And, and when we, we heard just a week ago that the rate of cyber attacks in Australia has gone up by 7% in the last year alone. And so we are really excited to partner with our cyber to um, help raise awareness of cyber risks, but also to help encourage everyone in the business and the government community to be working together to make Australia more cyber secure, because we really believe we could be one of the most cyber secure nations in the world if we put our hearts and minds to it, uh, as well as our hands. And then uh, we also, we think in particular, there's a big opportunity on skills to get smarter, both about um, getting more skilled specialists uh, in Australia, helping keep us safe, but also building skills across the community and, and smaller business in the economy. What's your general observations on skills? We hear a lot of it on skills in, in cyber, but we also cover space, smart cities, critical technology, and skills is you know a discussion across the board uh, and cross sector, but obviously technology related. Your observations, key messages or call to actions in that, are we, are we doing enough? No, we oh. have <laughs> a chronic and urgent skills crisis, both in cybersecurity uh, jobs and, and skills, but also in um, related jobs that are really important to cybersecurity. So, for example, at the moment in Australia, we predict we're going to need about 1.2 million um, tech workers by 2030. We currently have about 860,000. We think that's a net 650,000 more people coming into those jobs uh, to 2030. So there's this sort of long term, long term trajectory of potential gap. But the uh, the reason it's a problem at the minute is that where we have the biggest, deepest skill shortages today are in highly technical roles. So things like software engineering, you know, advanced security professionals and IC 
IT security and cybersecurity, for example. Um, and uh, but also jobs that require a minimum three plus years experience. And they're just not skilled. Like you can't manufacture a person like that in your economy yeah. out of thin air because it's like a seven year process to train and then get that years of experience. So we think the skilled migration system, it's just really urgent. Um, we start using that more strategically to bring in those critical professionals in those roles where we have the gaps now, particularly because of this quickly changing geopolitical environment. The problem is that um, I'd say geopolitics is moving faster than our skilled migration system. Yep. So it's taking about 180 days at the moment for the Department of Home Affairs to process visas in those key roles. And that's after the employers already spent three months, you know, advertising to qualify to bring someone in. So, you know, by contrast, New Zealand's taking 20 days, Canada's taking 10 days, Israel 10, the UK 15. So we're really at risk at the moment of being um, left behind in this global race to try and get access to that best specialist cybersecurity talent. Well, I understand uh, some of these roles were taken off the priority list uh, just recently by the new government. This is quite uh, astounding. What is the key message to government and are government listening? Are they? Are you seeing that they're taking action? Because visas are the key driver here. Are we, you know, following a, a global pandemic? I think we are very lucky to have Claire O'Neill as Home Affairs Minister. I think in Claire, we have a Home Affairs Minister and Minister for Cybersecurity who has a really strong appreciation of um, the digital economy as well as the security matters. So that was part of her background in being Shadow Digital Economy yeah. and Innovation Minister before it. So I think we definitely have a minister that gets, gets the problem and I think is, um, you know, wants to work with industry to fix it. Uh, I think though, and, and I think what the government has been focused on with the migration system is trying to introduce broad brush general reforms that overall will bring down processing times and reduce the backlog. I guess our message to them has been, we support that work, but we also just have this very immediate problem of a big shortage in experienced cyber and, and related um, professional jobs. And our skilled migration system is just proving too slow at the moment to really help respond to that in a timely way. And we just think prioritizing that problem, just given the the extent and the impact of some of the hacks we're seeing. And, you know, there's a theory, for example, that um, some of that activity has been driven by the Russia-Ukraine war, which has seen a a rising incidence of criminal attacks, but also perhaps some that might have some um, implicit support even from state actors. Yeah. So there's, you know, I think it's just because of that particular dynamic, it's there's a particular urgency to um, prioritising processing these kind of visas faster. Yeah, I think that is the current environment of disruption uh, and the like uh, from state actors and state actor sponsored groups. And as you mentioned, the geopolitical environment uh, is honest right now. So it's no, the, the time is now. So I suppose that is a timely uh, reminder for Australian Cyber Week to raise that awareness uh, for groups. We've done a range of interviews and uh, you are our final one. So thank you very much, Kate. But it is just the range of call to actions. What is your key call to action from the Technology Council? How can people find out more and uh, potentially join? I take it you've got industry groups as members, but how to get people involved uh, sort of individually? Uh, so people can follow us on LinkedIn or they can sign up to our subscriber newsletter list on our website. But usually our LinkedIn and social media channels are the most up to date. Um, that's a great way just to know what we're doing, to get access to the research, to get access to our um, to policy work and um, to contribute to the conversation. Wonderful. Kate Pounder, CEO with the Technology Council of Australia. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.